Hey guys, this is Grant Evans with Coldwell Banker Realty. We are here with John Harrison of Guarantee Rate Affinity. If you are not familiar with John, we have done a few episodes with him and he is super knowledgeable. He is an investor himself. Uh, we are going to talk today about jumbo loans. GRA is kind of bread and butter. Guarantee Rate Affinity, GRA is what we're going to say. Uh, their bread and butter is jumbo loans. Yep. They are the they have the best rates out of any jumbo lender in the country. I don't know if that's too much to say, or would you like? Well, would you back that as, up? As far as I know, we are the number one jumbo investor as far as reselling loans to other banks and things like that. As far as I know, I haven't seen anybody beat our rates yet. That's awesome. Yep. And that's, that's a hot take from John for anybody who's watching. So uh, before we go on, ju- people who are interested in learning more about Jumbo Loans, they can reach out to John. Uh, how could they reach out to you? Uh, best way is to give me a call, 801-404-9796. Uh, you can email me too if you'd like, jharrison at grarate.com. Uh, but I'd love to talk to you and, and kind of walk through things with you. Awesome. Um, so let's kind of just explain for anybody who's not familiar what a Jumbo Loan is is so basically the government fannie mae and freddie mac have a a loan limitation Uh, so for 2023 right now uh, the loan limits for most of the counties in the country uh, they're going to if if you have a loan amount over seven hundred fifteen thousand, you are then put into a jumbo rate Um, in the past where i've where i've worked before most of the time a jumbo interest rate runs about a half a percent higher than your regular conventional rate um, but the cool thing is here at ca- a, a guaranteed rate affinity, um, my rate actually runs on those jumbo loans. It's actually three eighths to a half percent lower than the conventional. I mean, we are blown away all the time by that. And then realize there are counties in the, in the country, uh, like we have Park City and Heber where it's a lot more expensive to buy. Um, their loan limit for a jumbo is actually 970,800, um, before you hit a jumbo. Um, so just know that I even have some clients who live up there who, when we go through their numbers, if it makes sense, they put less money down so they can have a jumbo loan because our rates are lower than a regular loan. Doesn't make sense to most people, but for me, it's great. I personally did my own loan last year with my with my company because I realized I could do a cash out refi on a jumbo at a better rate than I could get a conventional loan at at the local credit union. Now, this might ask the this probably already answers the question that I wanted to ask. Like, why would why would somebody want to use a jumbo loan for like, like if you're buying, like, this is my thing. If you're buying a million dollar property, like, like $2 million, mm-hmm. I feel like you should probably be making enough money where you don't have to go on a jumbo loan to buy it. But like, it sounds like the rate is probably better if, 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 if you, you go with the GRA rate. So I guess this again. This probably already answers the question that you, that you already stated. Why would anybody want to use a jumbo loan versus conventional? Why? Like, I don't. Yeah. And, well, like some people yeah. come to us and they'll be like, "Well, what about an eighty ten ten? Well, they'll go, "Let's do an eighty percent first mortgage, so we don't have mortgage insurance. We'll do a ten percent second mortgage, um, and then we'll put ten percent down." Um, the reality is you just have to look at the situation because we have 90% jumbo loans with no MI. The rate's obviously going to be higher because you have no mortgage insurance, but you can do it as one loan. Uh, but a lot of times I'll tell the people, look, if you're already going to be putting down 20% and you could have the choice where you're like, I've had clients come and say, well, I'm going to put 30% down or 35% down because I want to get my, my payment down. But then we look at the numbers and say, well, look, you know, you need to put down at least a 20, but you're going to be a jumbo loan if you only put down 25, but if you put down the 30, you're going to be conventional. When we look at the numbers, they might as well keep the 5% in the bank and do the jumbo loan at the better interest rate because it's actually a lower payment than if they put the extra 5% down. And then what are the, what are the requirements for a jumbo loan? Like what kind of person says – I can afford a $2 million house on a jumbo loan. You know, really, it just comes down to income. You know, there's a lot of people, especially, I mean, we found here in Utah, over the last two, three years, we have seen the jumbo limits just soar. I mean, we're looking at 150, 170,000 in the last two years where it's gone up uh, because the value, the prices of homes have gone up, um, you know, and they keep increasing because we don't have enough homes to meet the needs of the people here. Now, you know? now give a ballpark. How much money are usually people making who do a jumbo loan? You know, I would say a lot of times they're making at least $20,000 a month. 
you know, depends, depends on the 240 person. for anybody who's yeah, 240,000 a year. Yeah. So, but I mean, we have quite a few people coming here from other places from California and, and Las Vegas that are going, Hey, I'm making really good money, but man, you guys are great. Let's come up there and use my money and get a, you know, get a house for less. And you know, when you run the numbers, it really does come down to what makes sense. Where's the best bang for your dollar as far as how much money you put down on your house. That's a lot of money. Yep. It I is can, a lot of money. That's I think, I don't know. I think of having a loan, and granted, I don't. I don't make twenty thousand. I would like to make twenty thousand a month, and I'm. I'm hoping to kind of gain momentum to that, which would be great. But just having in back in my head a million dollar plus loan. Do people ever get scared when they do that? Or they just say, "Oh, there's some people that do." It just depends on how comfortable you are with your job. You know how how good is your income? Um, you know, it's just. What do you need to get? I mean, we see a lot of people these days who are going, "Hey, I've got a seven hundred thousand dollar house." Um, and I feel comfortable making it. Now I, I've got more family. I've got more children. And the house I want's a million one. You know, we're seeing it. Once people, a lot of times it's not first time home buyers that are looking for those jumbo loans, but it's people who've had homes for a few years, who've gotten used to making a payment going, well, you know what? I make more money now than I did when I bought my house. Um, I feel more comfortable putting down another $800, $1,000 a month towards a payment. I, I know when I first bought my first home, you know, at 220000 I was kind of freaked out a little bit, you know, but then – you know, the next house was was even more expensive, and the next house was even more expensive. And now, you know, I have a jumbo loan myself, and I don't really have a problem paying it, even though I realize that, you know, if I had seen this mortgage payment back when I started 25 years ago, I would have freaked out. But now, you know, based on where I'm at in my business, I'm very comfortable with it. It doesn't really mean much. I actually pay extra every month. That kind of remi- like that kind of draws to like my first time home buyers that I'll sometimes work with. They're so scared to buy a three hundred dollar, three hundred mm-hmm. to four hundred thousand dollar home because their payments a lot higher than their rent usually. Yeah. But surprisingly enough, every single one of them figures it out. Yeah, they they either put you know they decide okay I need two thousand a month towards my mortgage. Mm-hmm. We're gonna chill out on eating sushi every weekend mm-hmm. or anything like that. They just figure it yeah, out. You, you got to get a budget. We tell everyone whatever loan you're going to get, you need to talk to your loan officer. You should talk to your realtor. Put in, put together a budget. What makes sense? You don't want to be, you know, we, we call it we call it uh, cash poor and house, you know, house rich, because if you don't have any money to enjoy your life, what does it matter if you live in that four hundred thousand dollar house, but you can't take your family out to dinner once a month? You know, you need to look at what's the objective and make sure you stay within that range. But you know, we always tell people, you know, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm just going to rent. I'm not going to buy. Well, guess what? You know, you're worried about you know interest rates at seven percent. Well. Right now, when you rent, you're paying 100% interest. You don't get anything from it. Everything you do to the home that's positive is just going to be a benefit to your landlord. So at some point, you have to make the choice. And the reality is right now is rent has gone up so much that in a lot of cases, we can get you into a home for the payment that you're paying in rent, if not even a little cheaper. Um, so that's why we tell you, talk to your loan officer, talk to your realtor, look at what's out there because values have come down. So even though rates are a little bit higher, we tell people, marry the house, date the rate. You're going to refinance down the road. I mean, I even refinance. I just bought a property last month. I'll refinance it once, twice. I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm going to always get a better deal, but the house is what I wanted. It's where I wanted, and it takes care of the needs of my family. So that's really what's important to me. Is that your Tennessee cabin? Yeah, our cabin that we just got. Yeah, so. I think that's so cool. Now, um, can somebody use a jumbo loan on an investment? Yes, you have jumbo investment property loans. Is there? It sounds like there's a button there. Well, you've got to have more money down. Yeah. You know, like I said, I've got a, uh, you know, I've got one of mine, a couple loans where you can do ten percent down on a jumbo uh, with no MI. But on investment, you're looking at different beasts. There's a lot more risk involved because you could walk away from it and your family still lives in their own house. You know, so they're going to want twenty twenty five percent down on those, but they do have them. Gotcha. Well, I think jumbo loans are a great option for people who can do it. Um, are there any other requirements? Like, do you have like do you have to be a near perfect buyer? No, no. Like I said, I mean, the jumbo loans will go down to your six eighty credit scores. You know, you definitely the higher the credit score, the better the interest rate is going to be. Uh, but reality, jumbo loans are just another way for you to get out of that regular conforming loan limit. Get out of the we call them non conforming because it allows you to buy more home. Um, without putting down all the money. Because otherwise, you could go say, I need to buy a $2 million house, but I've got to have a conventional loan. Well, you got to put down one point, almost $1.3 million. Whereas if you qualify with a non-conforming jumbo loan, you know what, you get away with putting down that minimum 10%, 200000 Now, obviously, you're going to have a higher house payment and all that. But in some cases, if you know you've got a business that's making more money each year, or you've got you know, another way that you're going to make more money, 
Um, you know, it's just planning ahead, you know, but like I tell everybody, it's just look at what the objective is. Don't get in over your head so that you can enjoy your life. Yeah. Well, we are out of, we are running out of time today. Um, now I was going to ask you about the housing market prediction, but we, here we are in November and we just talked about that in our, in our HELOC. Well, the thing is, you know, just realize guys, we, we think values are going to continue to, uh, stabilize a little bit. You know, we've seen a drop in a lot of places, but if it's a good home and a great location, you're still getting top dollar. You're still going to see multiple offers. But reality is inflation numbers finally for the first time in about seven months. We first saw our little niche where we've seen a little bit of a drop. Um, and so it has caused everyone to be a little more excited that the, uh, the Fed might not be so aggressive in raising prime. We know we're going to see a prime hike next month in December. There'll probably be another one in January and February, but they'll probably be for less than what we were expecting. Um, so yesterday we had the biggest day in seven months. We saw about half percent drop in rates and we, we expect to see some continuation of that, um, where inflation numbers continue to get better. Unfortunately, unemployment will go up as we talked about. So there's going to be some, you know, some, Availability of homes that are for people who do lose their jobs, um, but by next summer we're hoping to be in that five five and a half percent range. So I think you're going to see a lot of that happening. So you know, just you know, once again, it comes down to your what your family needs are and where you're at and comfortability um, you've got with your your occupation. Yeah, for anybody who's wondering, today is November 11th, so yesterday was a really good, really good great day. day. It was really, it was really surprising. It was really good. I guess it was surprising to a lot of people, not to John. John knew yeah. it was going to happen because because Barry Habib yeah. works. I guarantee Ray is that right? He, no, he doesn't work for us, but he's an economics he's, he's, person for economists for for Zillow, and you know, won a couple of Zillow awards, and he yeah. gets on CNBC. I mean, he just he he'd been telling us for he, about seven months. This is where we're going to be. Now, let me ask. Let me ask, one more question. This is what I was going to ask before. Can you use a jumbo loan? As like a construction loan. Yeah, they have jumbo construction loans. Yes, there are banks that we do that are uh, one-time closes that can be a jumbo loan amount. Okay. Is there any requirements for that if anybody wanted to build a custom no, house? Typically, you got your 10%, 20% down. You know, you can't be the owner-builder. You've got to have an actual builder who's doing it. Okay. And you're going to have to have your down payment. But yeah, there's jumbo construction loans too. Can you be an owner-builder if, if you, the owner, have a, like a contractor's license? Nowadays, it used to be yes, but I would say about 95% of the time now, no. Okay. They, they it's got to be someone who's, who's Too much fraud them. happened uh, you know, the decade and a half ago, so okay. now they want to have a third person who's in charge. Now, for the jumbo construction loan, do they – does the individual have to own the property outright? There can nope, be a it can be part of Nope, it can be part of the acquisition in the one-time close, You know, okay. as long as they have and enough it, money for their down payment to include that. And then when they close on the home, they can tra- like refinance it over to like a, just a regular tr- jumbo loan? Well, most of the time you're doing a one-time close up front, so it's already done when you close. But you, you know, once, you, once you're into any home or refinance any home or buy a home, after you get to that 210-day mark, you're able to refinance or do whatever you need to do without any problems. Okay, awesome. We need to talk more about jumbo loan because I would love to build a house one day. One of my goals this year is to buy a lot and mm-hmm. and build a, a house on it, yeah. build a custom house. Yeah, I have a neighbor right now who's got 13 lots up that, you know, the lots are 675. You've got to put a well in, so you're going to be at 750. And most of the time you, you're, you're told to build a house that's two times whatever the lot costs. Mm-hmm. So these are all going to be $2 million plus houses that are being built. And we're working on with these individuals getting their construction loans put together uh, with the bank. So, you know, they're, they're happening more and more in this area. First thing that comes to my mind is I don't know if I could do $2 million because that sounds like ten to 15000 a month in my payment. Yeah. So that might not be an option, but <laughs> maybe, something, maybe something else. Down so the road. I'm hoping in 2023 that land prices finally come down or chill out a bit so that, I don't know. In my family, so everybody in my family has built their own house, mm-hmm. except for me. I'm the youngest by 12 years. And so, you know, my, my older brother has this uh, great house in Mapleton. He's building another one in Mapleton. My second oldest brother built, you know, his house. He even like stick framed the the trusses, mm-hmm. you know, and stuff like that. My family's very talented that way, and yet here I am. I'm like, I want to build a house because I I don't know why. In my life, I feel like I've already had always had to like catch up to my siblings. Mm-hmm. Twelve year difference, um, and so I feel like building a house. I'd be like, okay. And we we, we now, tell everybody now we're in the same pace of yeah. life now. But we tell everybody the same thing. Look at what you need to accomplish. What is the goal? And you know, when it's timed in, it makes sense, do it. But you don't want to jump into something that'll, that'll affect your family in the wrong way. Yeah. So, you know, you kind of take your time, bide your time. And the same for me. I have certain areas that I'm always looking for investment properties. And the last one just took three years before the property came up that was perfect for what I needed to do. And that's what you do is you prepare yourself so that you're ready for when that time comes. Yeah. And I think it's like, especially for people who are self-employed employed like me, I say, okay, John, I would like a payment about max of 4000 a month. Mm-hmm. 
what does my down payment need to look like in order to build a house with a million dollar budget yep. in my construction? Yep. And then we run, and that's when we run those numbers all before you ever even put an offer out or anything. We put all those numbers together with you so you know what you're looking at and what your max is going to be. Does GRA do construction loans or are they just need? We, we broker them out. We broker yep. them out. Yep. We have a couple different places that we work with locally here that we will broker them out with. And there are ones that are one-time closes. GRA, your one-stop shop. Yeah. So, well, right thanks here, so much, please. John, for, for coming to the closing table today. Uh, just once again, how can people reach out to you? Yeah, just give me a call, 801-404-9796. Or you can send me an email at jharrison at grarate.com. And I'll get back to you usually within 24 hours. Awesome. Thanks, for guys, for watching. Please like and subscribe to our channel for more Closing Table episodes. We'll see you next time.